Hi, my name is Miles, and in this video, we're going to answer the millions of requests that I've had to go through this effect. Don't know what to call it, and I still don't have an intro, so let's just get on with it. We're going to shrink the clips down, place them together in a compound clip and we're going to hide the border between them and then once we've got a compound clip we'll animate the camera to move between those two clips all you need to have to do this effect are two clips with a similar kind of edge so in this instance we've got a bunch of sky at the top of both clips now they're not identical but they're pretty close you could also maybe do it with grass if you had two grassy scenes and if you're happy making the transition pretty quick you can get away with two clips that are just the same kind of color palette as long as you can mask that difference between the two so let's walk through the process of doing that transition on these two clips this will work better with high resolution clips because we'll be zooming in to this frame so if you're working with hd clips you'll be zooming in beyond the HD resolution and you might get a softer image. So you don't need to be a complete baller like me and use 5K. I mean, by all means, if you've got a 6K camera these days, you've got my envy and my respect. But if you've got 4K, that'll probably work much better and you'll get a cleaner result. So the first step is to color grade your clips, which in this case I've already done. Obviously you want them to look like your final output, but just be wary of not making a divergence that's too big between the two edges of your clips that will be matched so you don't want one of them to go wildly different from the other next i'm going to overlay one clip on top of the other but shift it over because i know that i don't necessarily want to cut to the second clip straight away i'm going to make these into a compound clip by highlighting both of them right clicking the clip and then hitting new compound clip you can name it there but i'm just going to have that name now on premiere pro that process is called nesting if you are trying to do this on premiere pro so by double clicking into that compound clip, we can see we've got our two clips there that we're working with. Now I'm going to reduce the size of these both to about 50% scale. And I'm going to line up the edges that I'm dealing with and get them into position ready to animate the camera through. So I'll move the first clip down. And I'll move the top clip up trying to keep them straight and I'm going to rotate the top clip 180 degrees so that the top points line up so as we transition from one clip to another obviously the big problem we've got here is this boundary now if I did nothing at this point this border here would stick out like a sore thumb and it would be a pretty shoddy transition so what we need to do is try and blend these two images as best we can before we hide them with that other object, which in our case was gonna be clouds. So to help with this, I'm actually gonna overlay this clip on top of this one, and then I'm gonna feather it so that it blends a bit smoother. Now, obviously the top of this building can't overlap the top of this building. So I'm gonna bring this one down, but respect the difference between those two buildings so that when it's all, all said and done, you can't see both buildings in either of the shots. we we'll zoom in a bit onto the frame so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to apply a shape mask to this top clip. I don't want any of the size or the bottom to be affected by this. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit and I'm just going to play with this until we can see both clips and there's a smoother border between, between the two. This outer layer here will actually feather the difference and make that transition even softer. So let's click off this effect just so we can see and that's a little bit better so the longer that you want to linger on this border here in the actual final shot the better that this transition needs to be and in my case it's going to be quite a slow transition so i want to do a better job of matching these two images if the camera was going to whip past then it's less of an issue but i want to try and match these these two up and i think the best thing to do will be to try and attack the color on the top area of this bottom clip so I'm going to click the bottom clip to activate it. I'm going to do a new color wheels effect and I'm going to apply a shape mask to it. And I'm going to move that mask so that it, it matches the shape mask of the clip above roughly. So something like that. Now, whatever change I make on the color wheels in here, because it's set to inside, it will apply up here, but to this clip. 
Now obviously there is no, no part of this clip that is up here, but what it'll do is it'll feather that difference out from there to zero. So whatever change I make will be at 100% effect in the middle, where obviously the clip isn't even there, and then it will roll off gradually into nothing by this point. I'm actually just gonna play with the highlights, and I'm gonna bring that up a little bit until that line starts to disappear. That for me is already looking much healthier. Obviously the sky is bluer in here because it was a clear blue sky and this was overcast pure white cloud. So I'm actually going to bring the saturation down as well. And I'm going to warm it as I th I've got a feeling that it's, it's a bit, bit too cool. So I warmed it a bit, brought the saturation down and I've tried to match the exposure. At this point it's just a case of finessing any color changes that you've done to try and match that as good as possible. Okay, that's looking much, much better. To obscure that boundary even further, I'm gonna add clouds to this clip. So if I go into the generators panel, then under backgrounds, we should have clouds option. So I'm gonna bring the clouds in over the whole clip in our compound. Now obviously this is gonna need some work. I'm gonna go into the parameters for this generator and I'm gonna turn down the track off because I don't want the clouds to move and same with the dolly, change that to zero, turn the haze down, and I'm going to try a few different patterns here to get something that I like. Okay, something like that, let's go with that. Don't want this over the whole thing, I just want that over the border. So I'm going to apply a shape mask, and bring that down. I also want to make these clouds a bit smaller, so I'll go into the scale, look at about 80%, and I'll refine this mask just so that it covers the border and little else. Now obviously we've got this weird blue sky in the background, uh, whereas we just want the clouds themselves. So let's deal with that using a keyer. So we want a, a luma key to just isolate the clouds and take away all that blue sky in the background. Isolating this area so that it just gives me the brightest spots of the object in this case the clouds. That's done a decent job of getting rid of that background. Doesn't quite fit the scene yet, they're a bit too spread out for one thing, but they're really bright and blue compared to the scene. So I'm gonna tackle that by, you could either warm them up and bring down the saturation so that they're a colorless blob, just like that. That's looking a lot better. I'm going to actually reduce the opacity a little bit just because that will help them blend in the scene a bit more. Okay, at this point we're going to back out of our clip. So we're just looking at the compound. And then it's just a case of animating the camera between this frame and that frame to give us a transition. It does get really funny in Final Cut Pro when you do both a rotation and a transform move. So I'm going to actually do this in several steps. So the first thing to do will be the move of the camera from here to here. So I need to zoom back into my frame. Then we'll play with the Y axis to get our starting position. There's no way in Final Cut Pro to ramp the rotation or anything like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna achieve a ramping of the rotation using a speed ramp. So I don't mind that it's really long at this stage. I'm gonna speed ramp it to the length that I want. So let's apply those movements. So at this point, I want to tell Final Cut that the frame should be here. So I'm going to add a keyframe. And then at my second point, I want the frame to have moved completely into my other shot. So now we've got a clip that will animate from one position to the other. I'm going to compound this clip again by right clicking a new compound clip. And on this one, I'm going to add the rotation. So I need to find where that transition starts about there. I'm going to click the keyframe next to rotation. I'm going to find where it lands in the new frame and I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees. So now we've got a rotating clip. If I hit control V or right click and show video animation, I can see where these two rotation points are. And I just want to take care now of the black spaces that we get on the sides as we rotate. So I want to find the frame where that is at its worst and zoom in just to take care of that, that black area. 
Now bear in mind if you're going to add some letterboxes to this so that you have that classic cinematic effect then obviously I don't need to zoom in as much because the letterbox would cover up most of this black area. But for now I'm going to assume I'm not going to do any of that so I'm going to zoom in until that area disappears. At this point I'm going to compound the clip another time because I don't want to have my speed alterations on that clip itself. So here now I've got a very slow transition. I know that I was about 12 seconds in between, but I want to find the beginning of the transition and I'm going to do a speed change from that point. So I'm going to hit shift B, then I'm going to find the end of that transition, shift B again, and I'm going to speed up the middle so that it goes by much faster. I'm going to pull these sliders along to really ramp in and out of that speed transition. And that's it. So on the other example you saw, that was a similar effect, but I didn't want to linger on the border too long. So that was these two clips there. And because I whipped out of one clip and into the other, it actually works okay together. But if I want to move the camera with that whip, then for the purposes of this exercise, I made another compound and I stuck one on top of the other as before, it's, sorry, next to each other in this case and overlapped them and applied a mask to the clip on the right. There's the mask and then I added another generator called Glimmer and made that match the colors on the two frames roughly and that just obscures the border a little better. So if I zoom in a little bit you can see it's not too bad. So if we animate the camera so that it whips from one side to the other fairly quickly that's where you don't really notice the border and it works a lot better. So this was much more simple. I've just got them next to each other and all I did then was animate this particular clip, the compound, and made a bunch of movements so that it felt like the camera was floating. So I keyframed just using the position keyframe there. No rotations in this one, no speed ramps. So it was just the one compound clip and I applied a keyframe at the beginning and then just start moving the camera around using the transform button here and moving the frame around because I've zoomed in 500% so I've got the space to do that without going outside of the frame and moving it around and then ending with a swish to the right on, on this compound which matches the camera movement and then just another little camera movement to make it feel a bit more floaty. So I've tried to emulate a handheld move by camera animation with this one. Honestly, that could be better, but I just wanted to show you a different example of how you could whip across the frame and it'd be a lot less noticeable and a lot easier to merge two different clips. All right, we made it. That was it for this one. If you liked this kind of video, then please let me know and I'll do more in the future. Cheers and I'll see you next time. <laughs>